hi welcome to our channel so um, today okay um, we would like to actually make a video in response to the results of our creative writing competition so we basically held this creative writing competition I think it's actually in the winter break and then you know uh, uh, like uh, through a series of screening you know our judges give comments and marks okay and then we finally selected the finalists uh, not the finals it's actually the winners already and today you know uh, we're very happy to have invited actually the champion of the short story division Ivan, okay, to be our guest here to share to share with us, you know, um, his actually a uh, short story, and also to share with us, okay, uh, why what makes him actually create this kind of great work. Okay, so welcome, girl, uh, Ivan. Okay, so uh, let me actually before okay we start actually sharing the story. So I would like to give this certificate, you know, uh, to Ivan first. Thank congratulations. You. Yeah, that's great. And I also would like to say thank you, okay, to our judges, okay, uh, which uh, include okay, uh, including uh, uh, Kyle, okay. Mr. Kyle Frosen, uh, 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 Anna, uh, Dr. Anna Cho, uh, and also uh, Miss Christine mm as well. Okay, uh, they have actually done a lot of work in selecting, you know, uh, the winners of this competition as well. Thank you very much. Okay, so Ivan. So I know uh, your short story is actually called Fail of Ignorance, okay? So uh, like I want to ask, you know, um, why? Uh, what actually make you have this kind of idea? And you know, uh, why do you actually have this kind of theme? Ignorance, Fail of Ignorance, yeah. Um, actually the theme is uh, Fail of Ignorance is the idea of about uh, John Walls um, in, his, in his book, The Theory of Justice. He mentioned about this fail of ignorance. He talked about the fairness and um, to how to build a world with fairness. So I think I want I want to create some story to let people to um, talk about the fairness of our world. Mm. I want to remind or, or to share my idea of fairness to mm. others. And also I will try to um, have other elements such as uh, fate and decision making mm. um, for human beings to add mm. to create this story okay so does it mean that like we human beings sometimes are not you know uh, they're not very clear about what they are doing they're not very clear about why they make this decision they're quite lost and so that's why you use the word ignorance here and yeah. so you want to you know through this story okay to inform us that our fate is you know probably can be controlled by us as well something yes. like that mm, that's just interesting so uh shall we actually read this shall we you know go through the story please actually read the story for okay. us thank you wake up chris wake up we can't lose you chris a white teen woke up opening his green eyes slowly he saw his friends and teachers surrounding him. From their soft face, Chris knew something had happened. Something terrible had happened during his blackout. Chris, can you recognize me? Don't move. Medics are coming. Miss Wan asked a strange question. Strange from Chris's point of view. Miss Wan, what's the matter? I'm fine, just like I used to be. Well, so many people surrounding me. I can hardly breathe. It's impossible. He dropped from the fifth floor and there is not even a spot of blood in the, on the ground. His inner organs must be damaged severely. How long until the ambulance comes? We must treat this case carefully. This one whispered to his colleague. Mis Mr. Chris and Mrs. Chris, it's lucky that your son didn't get any fatal injuries or damage in this accident. To be honest, it was a miracle because he dropped from a high level. After two days of checkup, your son should be fine. But if he feels any pain again, please contact us as soon as possible. The doctor told Chris' parents and it seemed that everything had settled down. One random night after the accident, Chris woke up at midnight. He heard a conversation between his parents and listened to it sneakily. I think there are some problems in his programming system. We should contact Professor Peter. I agree with you and hope that we won't need to wipe up all his memories this time. It caused us so much last time. We must take care of Chris more carefully. We can't let him find out the truth. Chris was left speechless. He didn't know what his parents were talking about. What's that? What's programming system? Who is Professor Peter? Did mom say she needed to wipe out all of my memories? There were so many question marks in Chris's mind. He couldn't figure out the answers. Chris decided to leave the, these questions behind and went back to sleep. The next day, 
When Chris was reading his biology textbook, he found something interesting. The colors of the pupils of the children should be de decided by the gene of their parents. Amused by the book, Chris started to recognize something was wrong. Either the textbook or his birth certificate. Chris' green pupils did not match with what the textbook said. His parents' pupils were blue and brown. No way, something's wrong about this book. That's nonsense. Chris started to doubt his lineage, but in order to look for more evidence, Chris went down to the basement, as he remembered that there were some old pictures of his parents. They must have had some eye surgeries to change their eye colors. I'm their son, undoubtedly. Chris searched like a hungry cat. He wanted to know the truth desperately, and he knew that he would be the only detective for this case, so he had to figure out all the secrets by himself. However, he was not Sherlock Holmes. He couldn't solve the puzzle to find the truth. Chris felt depressed. He wanted to know whether he was living in lies for the past 15 years. When Mr. and Mrs. Chris came back, he asked them, Dad and Mom, I want to ask why my pupils are different from yours, because it is illogical and impossible according to the textbook. Am I, am I an adopted child? Come on, Chris, we gave birth to you. You are our only child, our treasure. Then how can you explain this? This textbook will never be wrong, and there are scientific reports supporting this finding. Mr. Chris faced him red and said, I think the money has been wasted, and I think the fall must have damaged his CPU. You must repair him. After his statement, Mr. Chris held his son's neck and pressed it hard. Despite Chris's resistance, Chris finally fell down and his eyes turned white, showing no pupils. Mr. Chris drove his son to Dr. Patterson, a beard old man. Doc, there's an issue. He find out that he's a robot. You said he will not be able to question his lineage after we wiped out all of his memories last time. We want our money back. Mrs. Smith was furious as he thought he was being deceived. I think his fall has damaged the restraint on his CPU. We said for him previously, it, it would be an easy fix, don't worry. Suddenly, Dr. Patterson dashed to Mr. Chris's back and pressed his neck hard and Mr. Smith shut down and fell to the floor as well. Dr. Patterson did not have a clear idea how to deal with the two robots in front of him. Damn, an under defective one. I should not allow these robots to think. Giving them an independent mind has made it hard for me to control them. This CPU model 1971 only makes them rebel. Even the newest model cannot stabilize them. Perhaps this robot will never be able to compete with human beings. It's time to shut down all the robot projects. Poor little Chris, you thought you'd find out your identity on your own? Everything you did was programmed by me. All of you will never realize who the real boss is here. Robots are stupid. Once they have a little bit of knowledge and power and start, and start to be cocky, they dream they can control everything, know everything. However, they never learn how tiny they are in front of me. Okay. So I notice, okay, there are two choices here, right? Yeah. So like, uh, so you've chosen choice A? Yeah, I chose the blue test. Okay. So uh, the second choice, right? So like readers are, you know, free to make a choice here, right? Yes. So uh, can I actually read choice B? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so it's about there's still hope actually in these robots. Okay, so let's see, okay, what happened actually in the red test. Come on, another fail. Uh, Project Chris failed once again, but this little robot Chris is one step away to revealing his true identity. Perhaps he, he can be upgraded and develop an independent thinking mind. It's time to take away the restrictions on these robots. Maybe all of them can recognize their identities as a robot and they make decisions on their own eventually. I have to work hard to help them develop their mind. Dr. Patterson grabbed his tools to work on the two robots afterwards. But no matter whether it's a choice A or B, we have a very, very unexpected ending in the last paragraph. Yes. Ivan, please, yes. It's here. We find him. 
Take him down immediately. Why are we doing this? Shut up, you idiot. Just follow the orders. Two muscular guys in black were arguing after spotting Dr. Patterson. They pressed on Dr. Patterson's neck, and Dr. Patterson shut down. It's Team JR. We have retrieved asset ATOJ, and are heading, and are heading back to headquarters. And that's the end of my story. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Ivan. Thank you. So, like, um, are there any special lines or any special parts of the story you think is very, very worth reading, and you think it's very, very inspiring? Um, actually, uh, at the end of the uh, of my story, um, I make choice A and choice B. So, mm. I I wanna make uh, I wanna give some choice for the readers to make some choice, um, mm. to make uh ending which is suitable for them. Um, there's hope or there's no hope um, mm. for them. Mm. So I think this is quite special, but mm. <laughs> although yes. you have made a choice, in the end of the day, mm. it's the black test, which means that mm. the ending is the same. Yes. Just like our fate. <laughs> okay. So the fate here, so uh, so like the, the ending is very interesting here. So what does actually him refer to here in the last actually, paragraph? Him is referring to Dr. Patterson, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Patterson. Mm -hmm. So which means that actually Professor Patterson himself is also another robot. As okay. Well. Yeah. And like uh, it's a set ending here, right? So yes. he's shut down. So does it mean like no matter what choice we've made, it's still leading to kind of a sad, <laughs> tragic ending. Um, you, you can say so because um, just like I mentioned, um, we thought we have the choice to make mm. uh, like um, Patterson. Mm. We thought we can control everything, but mm. actually we can't. Mm. It's all up to the supreme beings. Okay, so who who are the supreme beings here from your point of view? You didn't really mention explicitly, but like yes. from your point of view, how would you interpret here? So who are the supreme beings here? Actually, being a human being, of course, I would like to say I'm the supreme being mm. over the other mm. species, like the robots, because we are the creator of them. So, I would, so. um, but actually. In our reality, we can't say who is the creator of human beings. So, um. I don't know, maybe there's no creators or no supreme beings in our world. So. All of us can make our own fate and make our own choice. Yes. And so you can see as review actually at the end of the story, right? Like Dr. Patterson, you know, originally seems like he controlled everything, controlled at least a robot. But actually in the end, he could not actually escape from the fate of being shut down as well. Yes. So you can see like uh, no matter who we are, it seems like like we, it seems like, of course, first of all, we have a choice here as a reader, we control everything. But so what will happen actually, you know, in the end, we don't know probably. <laughs> I think in the reality, our, we may think we can control something or have mm -hmm. some choices um, for us to go to which school to mm -hmm. make our own choice. But maybe there's something that we can't control. Yeah. And that's what I call fate. Mm -hmm. Very. <laughs> but I would say yes, this is very true as well, you know, I agree, yes, I really enjoyed this story a lot, you know, very, very creative, especially towards the end. Thank you. Another idea I like in your story is actually about the color of the pupils, okay? What actually inspired you to have this kind of idea in your writing? Actually, the idea of the um, pupil color is um, from a movie called The Gift. Um, mm -hmm. It's a Hollywood movie. Um, I really like love that movie, and it's about in the ending. It's about our, our children, um, but we don't know who is the father of the children. Mm -hmm. So we we may be thinking is the father of the children is the antagonist or the mm -hmm. protagonist. Mm -hmm. We don't we even know. So it, there is a particular thought that. Um, the, the camera zooming to the children's eyes mm. and revealing the color or the pupils mm. of that color. Yes, yes. So, um, so I really love this movie and I want to uh, have produce, this element to put this in, okay. yeah, put so in my story. That scene in particular has inspired you to yes. create this this scene as well, right? That that's very good, you know. So seems like you 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 like uh you are inspired, influenced by the movie a lot as well, right? Yes. So that's great. So, so everyone 
of you, okay, if you're the movie goer, you can always actually be inspired by any great scenes, you know, in the movie, and then incorporate the elements in your own work as well, which is very, very, very inspiring. And like, um, I also noticed, you know, Ivan, you say just now you told me you're actually uh, from BBA, right? Yes. Uh, so, uh, so why? What make you actually join this competition? What make you create this kind of short story? Um, actually, I'm um, inf influenced by some great movies or oh. some great stories. Okay. I, I love storytelling mm. much. Um, I love having some creative story, especially for some stories that have a big twist in the end of the yeah. story. So I want to make um, my own story to have a big twist that uh, can shock the audience, to shock, my, mm. to shock my readers. That I think it is very cool. Okay, and so you've been actually writing a lot of stories as well? Um, not, not very much, but, okay. um, but a few yeah. already. That's good, there's many short stories. Yes. Okay. Very good. So, 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 like, uh, so, so, what you're planning to do? Also, engage in the film industry, like, like the movie. Um, sorry, the movie industry or like the short story writing industry. Um, actually, my dream is to be a director or okay. a scene writer. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I want, I want to make my own movie. Yeah, but that's good. That's good. Yeah, because cool. I think movie, movie industry, uh, or I would say, it's creating some story that. Um, creating movies like creating a world mm, which is that's uh, different from our reality mm. that we can control that world um, yeah. and which can send some important message to um, our audience so yes, I think that's true. movie is very yeah, that's great that's great I hope your dream comes true one day yeah probably should so. be fine yes okay <laughs> so please yeah please actually keep going I would say very very creative the story and hope like one day I can also see your work probably somewhere so who knows okay it's not necessary to be really a real movie but you can there are so many Michael films actually on YouTube as well we are doing yeah. a project actually on YouTubers as well so probably I will invite you to be <laughs> our director as well uh, for some of our channels so thank you very much Ivan thanks thank a lot you. thank you thanks a lot thank so you. thank you so so uh, see you next week. We will introduce a more channel, more words, okay, creative words to you, okay? So see you, bye.